Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Doug Borg, and this is going to be the latest edition of The Grittiest Take, as we're here to talk about the extension of Rasmus Ristolainen for five years. He got paid 5.1 per year, the big round and pounding Ristolainen that always I seem to forget in my mind is still so young and only 27 years of age, so only be at 32 uh, by the end of this deal going on 33. But before I continue, please continue to subscribe down below or up above on the easy to use widget at the end to help us grow to 215 by the end of March. Uh, this season, he has 11 points, um, or excuse me, 13 points, 11 assists um, in 49 games. Uh, Chuck Fletcher said, quote, Rasmus is an important part of our team, and we are very happy to have him on our blue line for the next five years. He is committed to being a flyer and brings a consistent physical presence to our team. Definitely agree with that quote. Uh, that is exactly what you get out of Rasmus Ristolainen every night. He is not a guy that is going to make you happy, warm, and fuzzy inside by the analytics whatsoever. But Chris Turian, the reason I bring that up is to shout out Chris Turian for a beautiful piece he did on Crossing Broad, which is how much NHL coaches really impact analytics, where they talked about how they work very well as a supplement. So do regular stats, <clears throat> but they're not the main thing. The gold is the eye test, whether that's you as a whether that's a coach, not you, whether that's a coach himself a owner himself, a GM himself going out with the scouts and seeing the eye test himself, or it's him trusting his scouts from the eye test because you can't just go by the stats because like all great coaches said, in, not, not all, but some great coaches in hockey and some in baseball and managers are brought up, they've used different um, stats similar to analytics over the years. They just now have a brand name for them that everybody goes by. So they're great to have as a, uh, su they're great to have as a supplement. Um, but they're not the best thing to have as the main goal line. Because if you have stats as the main goal line, sometimes you miss on guys. Like for example, Daniel Yorov is one of the top draft guys in this year's draft. Going to get picked by somewhere in the top 20. There's other guys, Lecker Maki. Their overall stats are not the sexiest. But when you project because of what you can see from the eye test already, you think they're going to be really good in a couple of years. And either they have the great skating speed or the great strength or they have everything develop and they really know how to anticipate the game better in a couple of years you're projecting so when it comes to wrist aligning the the reason i also bring that up is he might not be the sexiest guy statistically but we already know what he is you're not projecting anything he's a great physical defenseman he's a great shot blocking defenseman and he's a guy that plays like an old school flyer so no kidding the city of philadelphia is really gonna love him and he's really gonna love the city of philadelphia and i wouldn't even be shocked that the flyers kind of um, have him as a guy with Sanheim since that if they can let Sanheim continue to jump up that line might work going forward and then even get and then have have Igor Zamula who is, is he can continue to grow strength because that's really what he needs to be the best he can be as he can continue to grow strength on the third pairing with someone like Ham York and you can have a bigger guy that's like six two six three like Zamula and then York can fly up and down the ice so I think there's good different matchup pairings going forward with the Flyers now that you keep Risto in house this was at the high tier of my range of where I wanted to keep him. The Flyers Nitty Gritty group and I have had a conversation about it in Twitter DMs. And 5-1 to 5-2 was like the paramount side of my range. But the fact that you were able to keep him and it was at the 5.1 million where some people thought it would even get up to 5.5. Apparently the rumors of the 6-something, that was just his agent putting stuff out there, which is smart business, but it was never actually something that was going to stick that high. So I'm happy for from Chuck Fletcher's perspective, that that was never actually, it seems, a real offer. No, again, in conclusion, Rich is a guy, you're not going off of the analytics, you're not going off of just the pure numbers, which is 11 assists, the two goals for 13 points. You're going off of the fact that what you think he's going to continue to become as he come here into the Philadelphia Flyers as time goes on. So you're even projecting there a little bit. Actually, I shouldn't have probably said you're not projecting at all because you kind of are a little bit in that sense because he was with the Sabres for a while as he continues to maybe tighten up his game, which uh, some of the most like pr profound players or analysts like the Chelioses and et cetera of the world, or whether it's on ESPN, whether it's on NHL Network, TSN, I've thought about how this has been one of Risto's better seasons, which is why he could be trade bait, even the on 32 thoughts, the Freedmans and et cetera of the world. So the fact that you're able to lock him in, you get it, even if it's at the tie tier of what I want, I would have to give, because Risto's a B grade to me, a round and pounding defenseman. So if you signed a B grade for that high, I would probably give the deal a B and then have it continue to grow because it's fluid. 
So right now I would give the deal just because it's at the high end of my uh, range, a B grade, but you got him here for five years. He's still young. So I think it's a B that already is teetering on a B plus, and then it will continue to grow because as long as Risto finishes out this season well and that Sanheim continues to do well around him and they continue to kind of progress that line, I think by the end of this season that could be a B plus, and then it would continue to grow hopefully um, into the next and following seasons up more and more uh, through the range of this deal uh, because this seems like a pretty solid deal for the Flyers. The other reason, though, I give it a B is um, the fact that they spent the 5-1 on Risto. Now we need Chuck Fletcher to be able to move Van Riemsdyk in the offseason, and we need him to be able to do some other things so they can spend money to be able to fill the roster around the Risto line-ins of the world so they actually have a good team around those guys like the Provies, the Risto line-ins, who are some of the main guys on your defense, Sanheim, who I'm throwing into being one of the main guys on your defense, uh, the Couturiers of the world you got to build the rest of the block around them. But this is a good deal. For now, I'm giving it a B because Risto, to me, is a B grade at this point of his career round and pounding defenseman. So for signing him at the higher end of the tier, I'm just going to give the deal a B that has the great room to grow, though. This has been the latest edition of the grittiest take on Rasmus Ristolainen, signing for five years for $5.1 million per year. Please continue to subscribe down below or up above on the easy-to-use widget to keep us growing to 215 by the end of March. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe.